right, going to continue with the operating system development today. I have a couple commits here that I'm going to sort of redo. I had some some commits and I just I learned git revert, so I was testing that out and that just doesn't equal commit but reverts the changes from a previous one cuz I had some audio corruption and I didn't realize that I had that until way after I committed to the repo. So, you know, redoing things is always fun. Maybe it'll be different this time, a little bit better. We'll see, as far as the code quality is concerned. Uh, before I get started, I, I just want to fix a couple of uh, looming issues, looming bugs. Well, one bug and one issue, I guess. So they're pretty fairly obvious ones, sort of. But if I make the thing, I cannot accurately or correctly change into a directory that's multiple levels deep. So by default, and I'm going to be changing this in, in the video today, but by default I just have a base root directory. And if I make a directory, let's say SYS for system, that shows up there and that's all right. I can look inside there. It's empty. That's fine. I can make a directory within there and let's say test. And we can look inside and we have test. However, if I try to directly go to that test directory that's nested, I only get to the first directory and things are subtly bad and it says oh it's failed we can't we can't do that stuff there so i want to fix that right quick that's not too hard the issue is that i'm not sort of properly ending a directory when i change to it so at the bottom of my file system uh, implementation file here change directory there can be issues where i'm filling out the path that i'm changing to and i don't correctly end the current path after I've found a directory, I don't end it with a slash. So the simple fix there is to say whatever position we're in, whatever position I'm on that I'm ending the current directory with that string, I just should always end it with a slash. So that kind of fixes that that bug there. Current, uh, we'll say current directory string with a slash just to signify it's a directory that way the other path filling out for the next directory. That way that code works. It should always end with a slash and a null, but that's not always true as you just saw. But that does ensure that we can make multiple directories. I can't make multiple at a time, so if I try to make sys test, it's going to fail <laughs> and we don't even make the system one. So if I make system and then I make system test in the current one, we have the system directory and then I have, if I spell it right, we have test, and I should be able to directly go within there, and I can, so I don't have anything there. Just make sure that relative paths work. Uh, I'll just do that, and that should be the top level. Okay, that's a simple thing there. Uh, the other issue was that I wasn't figuring out where these extra blocks were coming from, where I'm making the super block. I don't know why I have to add a, add a one here, for example, or multiple, uh, multiple of one, I guess, higher numbers than one. And it should actually be a bit higher than one. The issue is that if I go into, let's say, the, the file system file again, when I'm creating a file, which is called FS create file, just move that to the left. When I'm creating a file and I'm finding new bits in the inode and data bitmaps to determine where on my disk image translated to a, a block, a disk block value, I need to know where to put a new file in this case, a new inode for the file and the data for the file itself. So the new inode, that's okay. It's within the inode bitmap and I find that up here. I get the next inode bit from the superblock reference and set the next one, find the next one. I do the same thing for data bitmap, except when I'm finding the first free data bit, I'm using this data bit here as the first block in the extent. So the data for the file is at this disk block and that's a, a zero based index of disk blocks from the start of this disk image or partition, whatever you want to think of it as. However, when I'm first making the disk image and the super block, I am offsetting the data bit after, sort of after the data blocks in the image itself. So when I'm first setting the data bit in the super block, it says you can write file data here, but this is offset from the start of the data blocks on the file. This is an offset from the first data block in the data block section of the file system, if you will. But when I'm creating a file and create file, I'm using it as an offset from zero. And that's not true. I have to offset it from zero plus however many blocks are before the data blocks in the file system. So that's my issue. It took way too long to find that out. But instead of a one here, I should say probably wherever the data blocks start. 
which conveniently I have right here, super block versus data block. At a minimum, this would be five to, to account for the, the boot block, the super block, the inode bitmaps, the data bitmaps, and the inode blocks. So at minimum, those should each take up one block, and zero-based indexing means we'll start at block five after all of those. So I can set this to a five, or for it to be more dynamic, let's say we're going to use the first data block, and I should, know, I should no longer have any issues with this to-do thing here. Why it needs one extra, we'll have to offset from the data block there. I can do it also for here. Super block for data block. And that's the first available disk block that we can write new file data to, directories or files or otherwise. So that is okay. I think this is still going to be two by two. This file will be changing in this video. I just wanted to fix that first. And I won't really see any difference, except that later on we should be able to prevent some bugs from running that normally would be such as running tests in different directories, so to speak. We'll just go into system tests, and I'll run some tests here. They all passed. Make sure I'm not using too much memory. This will be a little bit lower than it was because I'm offsetting more blocks and making more from that change I just did. But let's say... Read test.txt. Hello world. Okay, let's go one level up. Just checking for memory leaks here. I'll run the test in this folder, which will make more data blocks in here. But we shouldn't use any more. Yeah, no memory leak. We're only using 28511. And we should be able to look at the other files in here. Okay. And reboot should work. Because we're not overriding, you know, needed stuff before the data blocks in the file system, such as the super block. Okay, that should make that more dynamic and work better. So what do I actually want to do during this video? I'll go in the make file here for a sec. I want to change to have an initial file system set up when I first make, when I first create this, when I run, you know, the make command. I want to have an initial file system set up on the disk image that is set on boot. So instead of having only the base root directory, I want to have whatever I want as an initial file system, whatever hierarchy, folder, directory, structure, and files therein that I want. It would make things more dynamic. I wouldn't have to hard code an array or a file with strings of things to pass when I make the disk image, I can say the make disk bin file here can be a program that looks at a file system, a, a file tree on my host system here, and it can just copy whatever is in there into the disk image. So if I have a setup, let's say under the bin folder, for example, which I'll probably use here, if I make directories under there for a file tree, let's say I call it I call it root, I'll just call it file system root so I know it's for the file system, for example. And then I make things under there, just in case I'll put p, file system root. Let's say I have a, a system folder and I put like help text or documentation or the, the bin files for the OS, I can include them in there or something. I won't include the OS itself because it would try to keep rewriting itself in an infinite loop and that wouldn't be good. But let's say we have we have a file structure under there. And I'll say we have docs or examples or something. So we'll do that and I'll make a, a test file. Let's say we have testing, testing one, two, three. And I'll put that under, I guess I don't need the quotes, it'll include the quotes. Oh, along with a new line, but that's okay. So root, sys, docs, just as an example. And I need to include something like that, okay. So if I look at, if I look at that, I'll have this example structure and I don't have anything there. Let's say I make a user folder as well. That'll be empty. Instead of sys, it doesn't really matter. I call it user, user. This will go with short three, three letter names there. I made user docs, that's fine. So testing, user file. I'll put that under user docs test.txt to say test2 for a difference there. So I have this example file tree structure here. I want to copy this into my disk image so that I have the same folders, the same files. Under bin, I'll put my regular OS binary stuff. 
the things that are needed to build the disk image so you can view them later at runtime within the OS, sort of, not really reflection, but sort of interesting there. I can put the source files under like a sources folder or something. And then hopefully later on, we can use that to maybe update the OS within itself, for example. Or it's just there to see if you want to see it when you're running the, the OS itself. I think that would be interesting, and this would make building the initial image a lot more, uh, I'll say dynamic, but a lot more flexible as the stuff you want to do. You don't have to do any special processing. You can just say, I want this file included in my file system. You can just copy it in there from your host and then build it, and it'll be there. So that'll be kind of cool. So I want to go ahead and work towards that, and I'll be doing that. All right, so how am I going to start making this initial file system? I'll put a small change in the make file here. Yeah, put a small change in the make file here to, let's say, just copy everything under that bin folder or to that bin folder. So I run make disk. It doesn't really care where the files are, but I can use these things later inside of the make disk program to look under that file tree. And if I need all the bin files to be part of the disk image, I'll have to find them somewhere within that file tree. So I'll just go ahead and copy those under here before I run make disk. So I'm going to make all of these and I could either do it within these, these uh, sort of subsections here, since I just put them into there anyway, into the bin directory, or I can just copy them here or move them. I guess starting off would be copy. So instead of sending a list, let's say change copy to move when ready and not needed in bin folder. So that'll be a note for me that I can change to not have copies of these things, but move them later. Right now we'll say we move them. That's in the bin directory. So everything that isn't, this ends with a slash. Yeah, so everything that isn't the OS I guess I would do this, not OS, but everything.bin. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to copy that under the file system root. And it'll be system bin, I believe is how I set that up. So file system root, system bin. Yes, I'll do that. Okay. So we'll just copy all those under there. Make sure that they're, they're done. And I can see if it shows up actually. Yeah, it does show up. So under file system root system bin, we have all these. All right. So what I can then do is change, let's say the third stage a little bit. The boot sector shouldn't have to change. And the second stage bootloader shouldn't have to change. As long as I don't move the position of the bootloader, which will be the third, yeah, the third stage bootloader, which is always going to be at inode two because it makes it easier to find and boot. So that will still stay at inode two. And all of this should work. And the second stage is, is determined from that. So the third stage will be a program that's loaded from inode 2. But I'm going to make this a little bit more flexible as well. So instead of finding and loading the root directory and everything from this stuff, I can sort of do a similar setup to how the kernel initializes the file system stuff, which I think I have a, should just have a function for that called like init file system vars yeah whatever i'm doing within this function i can do within the third stage bootloader because it's just going to reset and do it the same th the same way here which is fine so i can just copy this stuff to have things available that way instead of i guess i'll do it after read write sectors or really just after i do this i'll say debugging or to do or new or something i'll say debugging I'll just remove this later. I got rid of the text that I had copied, of course. All right, so the kernel will, will do this same stuff again. So I don't necessarily need to set all of it. Like the file virtual address probably don't need to do that unless I'm doing malloc and I'm not going to do malloc here. I'll just set a static buffer and that'll be all right. But if I do this stuff, I don't have to hard code paths or anything. I can, well, I can, I have to hard code a path, but I'm not going to be searching through the file system. I can just point to where the kernel and the font is, and it'll be a little bit more, more dynamic here, I think. Instead of assuming that these things are at fixed addresses. So super block is going to be at the super block address. That's still true. 
Let's, what am I not doing? I'm going to replace this stuff down here. So my, my purpose of doing this is that I'm not going to be looking through and searching through these inodes manually. I'm just going to point where the thing is directly. But the way to do that and have paths work referencing that is I need to do some initial setup that the kernel does. So that's why I'm copying it into here. If that makes more sense. Probably doesn't. So I don't need to do this. Well, I do need to set up the root inode first. That's fine. Current directory is malloc. Let's just have... We'll set... Well... That's within the implementation file. That's probably within there. So instead of doing that, I'll just set up a buffer. I'll just set up a temp buffer. Um, not doing this very well. <laughs> I'll just set up a temp buffer here and the current directory can point to the temp buffer. That's all right. And that'll be the same thing. It'll just be static. But that's fine. We can set that to zero. That's fine. I just didn't want to call malloc from the third stage bootloader. That's all. We'll copy into that buffer a slash. So this doesn't need to be this large, but that's fine. And we'll set these to the root inode, which is gotten from the initial inode block for the first. That's the root. Okay. So what I can do with that is say I have a string, which I should probably name this like string or something. I just haven't yet. But I have a string for the directory that we're in, and we're starting at root. Our current directory is root. The current parent of root is itself is root. So what I can do with that, and I don't need to do this stuff probably. No, that's fine. Don't need to do this. So I don't need to do this for the kernel ID. Since we're finding the kernel inode, it's a little bit simpler. We don't have to find the directory entry and, and check the name and get the ID for that name. Instead of doing that, we can just find the kernel inode directly, and I'll delete this commented out code in a bit. But we'll just put this above here. So how do I find the kernel inode? I know I'm getting an inode. So this will be, I'll just call it inode, and I'll set it to find, or not find, it's what, inode from path? What I called it? Yeah. And then I can give it the path to the kernel that's set up within the file system. So if I'm assuming, the file system root is root, and that root is going to be this fs root within our bin. I'll just consider that to be the root of our, our virtual file path, whatever, however you want to think of it. From, from that starting point, it's under the sys directory. So we have root, the root slash, and then the sys, and then bin, and then I have my kernel, so the kernel.bin. So assuming that file is put into there by the build process, we'll find it because the file system is set up and make a disk will have made it work. I'm assuming that this works for make a disk but right now. We can just set it up from here because the files will be copied into there. So this should still be all right. And that gets the kernel inode and then we can load that from disk. Finding a font can be similar. I'll just reset the inode to wherever the font is. And by default, I called it uh, T-E-R-U-32-N, -E so the Terminus 32 point font. And that should still be in, in that folder as well. Yeah, it is, okay. Assuming we find that, we'll find it, and then the rest of the stuff can work the same. Because the kernel will be loaded, we'll load it to there, and that'll be alright. That'll be as part of setting up the virtual memory. So let's see if that works. It might not. I don't know. This is exciting. Just move debugging down there. Okay. Okay, it does not. Incompatible type for load file. I probably need a pointer. Yes. Okay. So wherever load file is, I need a pointer. That's all right. I can just send the pointer to that actually does inode from path should just return a valid inode and not a pointer to an inode I don't think but I don't remember it returns an inode itself okay redefinition of inode yes you can use the same one for the fonts and the invalid type because they are not pointers they are structs themselves unused variable font that's fine one one three Needs a dot there. 
Okay. And it doesn't load. Ah, of course not. Why would it load? <laughs> so we're not finding it under there, I suppose. Although the file should be copied under there, and that'll be all right. Oh, the file system isn't made yet. Duh, sorry. I still have to do the make disk stuff. <laughs> right now it's only under root. So if I, if I, well, when it loads, everything's under the root directory. So I, shall st I still should be referencing the root directory. But I'll leave those as to-dos. Duh. Everything's under root. So my virtual file system path that I'm sort of assuming is going to be there, everything's under root right now. They're not under where I want them to be later. Now, if I reference root, you know, I'm saying I have this root directory, the kernel's under there. That's why I'm calling it like this. And the font is under there as well. So later on, I'll move it to this path. Right now, it still needs to be at root. But that just proves that if we set up the file system similarly to the kernel, it's a little bit more, well, I want to say it's more flexible. It's probably, I'm still hard coding paths, but it's less work I have to do. So if you want to put things at different areas, that's fine. You'll just have to change wherever this path ends up being on your end, right? And there's probably a better way to do it. Like, I don't know, changing changing this source code. I mean, we could open this this C file and then write to it in a location or have it be in memory or put it in a linker script or something where we actually have where the path is and not hard code it here. You know, the make file could do that somehow. I don't want to think about that, so... Oh well. But that makes it a little bit more flexible. I'll just have to remember to do that. And the boot sector in second stage won't have to change. The other changes will all be within this make disk.c file. So boot second second stage, I will actually put those in the file system. So I'm going to remove that to do for now. And I'm not going to use these file name size pointer. I'm not going to use an array of files here. Or num files because I'm going to be directly reading the host file path and copying that into the disk image. So the boot block will be the same pretty much. We'll just have to read from some other section. Um, okay, so how do I do that? We'll have to read and open it up and, and do all that sort of thing. So some of these will change, sort of where I'm getting the files from and all that. So I'm, I'll be getting files from a different path, for example. The super block won't really change that much. It's just it needs some things set up first, such as the number of files and the total size of those files. Um, other than that, the inode bitmap, data bitmap, those can stay the same because those are just dependent on the super block values. Write inode blocks and write data blocks, these these functions will will change. They'll be removed. Effectively, so. I don't know what all I want to comment out and what I don't, but I'll be writing new functions anyway, so I'll probably comment these out just in case. So that I know if I get errors, I'm still calling them and I'm not going to do that. Array list, not going to do that. User input disk size, that, that can still be a to-do. That's still an open item. So what do I need to actually build the file system if I'm not doing it how I was currently? <laughs> I need some data. We're getting the total size of all the files here, so I know I need the total size and I know I need the total number of files to fill out the writes, inode and data bitmaps, and other values for the super block. But those should be the only two things that I need um, to start off with. And then after I write the boot and the super block and the bitmaps, dependent on those values, I can then write the file data itself by copying over the sort of host file system, if you will. And clean up, I don't need to do that either. Okay. So I'll just put another to-do in case I search for these later. Remove all commented out code when, when done. Okay. So do I want to get the number of files and everything before here? Probably. I can do it within here. Since I'm not going to be using the array, don't need to do that. But I will need to fill out file blocks, the number of files. So the number of files was a 32-bit value here. File blocks is a 32-bit value here. I'll just set that there. Okay, so I need to fill out those values first. So let's do that. So let's get total number of files. Okay. 
So the total size of those files. This will be, I'm gonna call it, <laughs> I don't remember, file blocks. This will be to build, super block, and, and rest of this image. Okay. So I'll have a function to do that. I can do it similar to these other things, and I'll say get, I don't know, get total files or something like that, or get file data. So, something like that, file info, I don't know. They're, they're, these are not good names, but we'll just have that be there. <laughs> That's fine. I could send in these things or, uh, well, they're global. So I could either initialize, I'll just keep them global. That's fine. We'll have it be there. We might pass in variables later. We'll say if it returns false or an error condition, we'll exit. Okay, so we need to make this get file info function. And I'll make other functions down here. Right, inode and data blocks for files. I've, I'll have another function in here. It'll be right inode. I'll just combine them. Because we'll be, I'll be reading through the, the directories and writing the files and the data for the files at the same time. So I can just combine these. And I'll do that for later on. Okay. So this is going to fail, right? Because nothing's going to... It's not going to make the file, and I'm implicitly declaring things and not using them. And I'm asserting files that don't exist and all that stuff, so... Okay. Let's initially get file info and fix the other issue, I suppose, with the boot block. I'm going to use variable fonts. I mean, I can fix that too. Fonts, I'm not doing that. Okay, a free that's down here. Yes, so in the boot block, I can't use this anymore. I'll have to actually make file pointers here. So if I'm assuming fs underscore root is going to be the root system, I need to go under there. This is offset from where I'm currently at, which is in the build folder, so I have to go one up and then go over there. That's fine. So it's a little bit more code, and it's hard coding stuff here, which is not great, but... Overall, the file system, other than these needed initial binaries, which maybe we can fix later, the overall file system will be a lot more flexible and dynamic. Just these paths have to be hard-coded for some initial files here. But they were hard-coded to begin with anyway, so I'm not really deviating from the norm there. Okay, if I want to open that, let's say just read binary. It's going to be all right. Just reading, not writing to it. This is called bootsec.bin. First, I can put these things... And I don't have that, um, sector binary not found or could not be opened. That seems all right. But if we did open it, then we have that there and we can say not files zero, but just FP. We still have the boot block there, that's all right. The reading into that. That should still be all right. The second stage bootloader will have to do that. Except we'll do the second stage. Second stage binary, open that, and we'll say second stage cannot be found. Not found or cannot be opened. We did open it, and it won't be files one dot size. We'll need the size of that, or I can just keep reading from it. Because I'm reading into the sector anyway. We don't have to do that necessarily. We could have that be an empty condition there. We can just say if i is greater than seven, it's too large. Second stage binary is too large. Maximum size for boot block is seven sectors. Maximum size, seven sectors. Okay, else we will read from it, just repeatedly, because we opened it, it should start at the start of the file. 
just read that into there. That starts at one. That's okay. That should be all right. Then we'll write the boot block to the disk image. Which I'm writing a sector at a time. I really could just write the whole block itself. Boot block. Could just write it itself. That's not a, a array. I guess that would be if I did that right. Set a sector size. We do block size because it's the size of a block. Just assume that we write that. Okay. So it's a little bit, you know, more involved for that, but that's okay. Just because I'm hard coding the paths here. I feel like this should work. I'm reading one sector at a time. If it's above seven, that's not going to work. That should be okay. It's not going to do much here. Implicit declaration of close. I did mean F close. To go along with F open. That's true. Okay, so get file info doesn't exist. The other stuff's all right. Okay. And we'll assume that num files and file blocks are filled out so that the super block works. So I shouldn't have to mess with that. Although I may change how we determine the root directory. We'll know the number of files, so we shouldn't have to do plus two for these. Actually, we might. I might still leave that. We won't have a minus two, because I will have the boot sector in second stage. Those won't be there, though. We'll have the system and user directories, and we'll have dot and dot dot. But system and user will probably be included, I'm assuming. So I might just need to do plus two for these. And if that's wrong, then I'll have to, you know, change these things later. <laughs> But I will be including the second stage and all later on. Initial root directory on disk. I guess I would determine how many entries are in the root directory, really. And that wouldn't be the number of files anymore. It would just be whatever I have on there. So I'll have dot, 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 and... Um, and system and user. Let's say get a root directory files value as a variable and use it instead. Okay. So this will in effect be number of files directories multiplied by size of directory entry T Divided by directory entries per block, or well, I guess I'm just doing that. Because it's directory entries per block, so I just need this, not the size. Number of files directories divided by directories entry per block, yeah. That's all that would be, okay. I don't want to hard code it, but right now it's only going to be four. It'll be dot, 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 and the system and user sort of directories there. Those will all be directories, those will all be directory entries. This won't be num files, this will be four, <laughs> effectively. Okay. Four divided by the entries, four mod entries, and we should have like, it's like eight or 16 or whatever is the number. So it'll just be uh, basically just one, you know. Four mod will be true, four divided by will be zero because truncation from integers, okay. I don't think there's another thing I have to change. As far as stuff that's dependent on number of files or file blocks, I think the rest is all right. At least hopefully. I know in data bitmaps I'm not going to mess with because they are dependent on super block values and nothing else. That is all right. Well, the inode's dependent on the number of inodes. Yeah, which is dependent on those. Okay. So we'll have... We need to get file info first. We'll have that function. I should make these void until proven otherwise. I should write small comments as well, probably. We'll say total number of files in file system and total size of those files in blocks. That seems reasonable. That is what I call this right, git file. Whatever I called it. Oh, right here. Get file info. Okay. The rest of these aren't void, are they? I should make these void explicitly, because right now, technically, you could pass in anything. 
I don't want that to be true. The compiler probably doesn't care. It's not going to make any super optimization guarantees with that, but that's all right. Okay, so what am I going to be doing for reading through this thing? I'll probably have directory pointers, directory entry pointers, that kind of stuff. Um, might want to use Vim's terminal for this. I've, I was messing with that a little bit. It seems pretty decent. You just go into insert mode and it turns into a terminal. Other than that, you can go to normal mode and copy the text and do everything Vim that you want. So that's kind of interesting. Then you just do like control W and you know, your regular window movements. It's just insert mode is in the terminal. So I can make and see if I have errors here. I don't have to do it within this other window. Sometimes it's a little easier because I get actual highlighting sometimes, but anyway. We have open, read, write, directory, that kind of stuff. I'm gonna use the POSIX sort of APIs here. A minimum GNU for Windows, MinGW should include headers for these, these functions, at least for open, close, directory, and maybe rewind directory. So he should be, oh, and read directory, I'm gonna be reading. Uh, so he should be able to use the same thing within minimum GNU for Windows, I think, even though overall my OS doesn't work for PE files still, I need to make a PE loader and do some other things, but I'm assuming at least this would work on both systems, hopefully. I don't know if Windows has the sys types, but I don't need that, I just need the directory entry .h, really. And for stat, I do need sys stat, however. I'm going to be using stat to get sort of uh, the type of a file I might need or the, the absolute length and bytes of a file. Which is sys stat, yes. That I don't know. I feel like that is still under mingw as well, but I'll just, I'll be using stat and the other thing there. So anyway, open directory. I'm going to be reading through the directories. So how do I do that? We need a directory pointer, and it'll be open directory. I'll just call it directory pointer. They usually use derp in examples I've seen. So what, what directory do I want to open as my sort of initial file system, my initial root directory here? I need to open the fs root directory, and I want to read everything under there, maybe recursively, maybe not. I guess recursively would be good. So I might need another function that I do beforehand that I pass in a directory entry. I'll figure it out in a minute. <laughs> I might do a breadth first search kind of thing where I call a function recursively, and then this function would be a driver for that. So I could call a function to get everything under a directory. If I start at the root directory, I don't want to call itself recursively. I want to call other things given a directory pointer under the root. So I might change that in a bit, but anyway. Assuming we open that, it opens a directory stream, returns a pointer, position at the first entry, fd open returns an fd, or referred to by fd, not the name. They return a pointer or on error null is returned. Okay, an error null is set, I'll just say null is returned. So if not, directory p, say error could not open uh, directory. Not open directory that. All right, I don't do end if I just do that. I cannot be thinking RPG on the brain. That will not be good. Also, close directory, not close fir tree, but close directory. That just returns an int, returns a zero on success or negative one, which closes it. Okay. So later on, we'll do close directory given the directory pointer. And we'll just assume that that works. Okay, so if we open the directory, I want to read through that and get everything underneath it, which means I'll probably need to look at read directory instead of closing what I just did. Get some nice little dots and artifacting there. That's always nice. The read directory entry, we need... Uh, look at read directory 3. Well, why do you go to that one by default then? <laughs> That's okay. Directory entry, all right. Struct, directory entry, pointer, read directory. Okay. So I think I can do this in a for loop or a while loop. Let's say we have a for loop. The struct, directory entry, pointer. We'll say directory entry. That's fine. That'll be read directory, given the directory pointer. 
And what does it return? It returns the name, returns the inode number, the offset, sure. It doesn't return the length, so that's why I'll probably need to call stat to get the length. But we will have the name. And we will have the type, so we can check the D type field. And there are macros to check as well. So those will be okay. So we can check if something is a file or a directory with those macros. I'm just trying to see the return value, returns a pointer. If the end is reached, null is returned, okay. So while it's valid and not null, we have a directory entry. Also to avoid calling stat or further actions depend on the type. I will call stat or lstat, I guess, for the, for the size, because I need that, size and bytes. So we have macro constants for the value returned in D type. Do you have an example of using those, or do I just call them? I guess they're called as functions, so I'll do if dt reg, or do I need to say if D type equals dt reg? I guess that would be it. Whatever, I'll figure it out later, I guess, probably. Maybe not. <laughs> so while directory entry is valid, we'll do that. And if we want to keep reading, each time we iterate through this, we'll just read again the directory pointer. And to check that that works, I guess this will stop when we... This will just stop and read only within the first level. This won't nest or recurse or anything. But I can check that that's happening. I'm using my host printf. What standard I will write? Yes, okay. Let's just see if we can read the, the names in here first before I go further. I'll just say we found found a file, say found percent %s under our directory. Uh, yeah, I'll just do a new line for all these. That's fine. Let's say just to differentiate from other text that might appear. I'll just do that. So we will have found directory entry, and that's a pointer. So I'll dereference to get the name, and that will be a string. Okay. So under the make process, we found nothing. <laughs> I don't want to read the dot and dot dot things. We failed the assertion anyway. I freed FP78, really? I did not read this into there. That's interesting. I guess if the file is... Oh. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to read past the end of the file. That would, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Uh, let's just say while F read equals one, we'll keep reading. Yeah. I'll just do that. Uh, or not. No, I won't do that. I'll just read. And if it's less than one. Yeah, if it's less than one, then I'll end. So I'll say read next sector until end of file. So if it's less than one, then I know I didn't read a full thing. And I'll just leave the for loop, which is break in C. Is there a better way of doing this? I could do one in sector size. I can stop when I read less than a sector. If that is less than FS sector size, then we'll stop. Okay. That should write that file. So. Under the fs root, we have dot and dot dot, not necessarily in that order, and system and user. So we found these things, and it could be a file, it could be a directory. I haven't added any file blocks, so that's zero, that's why it says negative two. Okay, just wanna make sure that that would work. I just had it too, and I searched for it for no reason. So we found this, and it's either a file or a directory. Um, I could get fancy with that, probably. I don't need to, though, but... It's dtype equals... It's dt, I guess, for directory entry type. And it's reg or dir, I believe. So it's only going to be a directory or not, so I don't need to be too fancy with that, actually. But anyway, we know we found these things. I want to skip the dot and dot dot directories. Those aren't really... Needed. I guess I do need to add them though, especially to root, because they will be added in my file system as well. Uh, and if I find a directory, I guess I would have to call something else, don't I? So let me do 
this. Let me copy this. We'll start off opening this, and when I get the file info, I'll get it under a directory. Let me do it that way. I'll pass in a directory pointer. This will be exit failure at this point. And we'll get all the files under a directory, under the root directory in this case. We'll just say I do that. Then I can do this, and we assume that we have it. And we should still get the same thing here. I'm not going to do anything else. We should still get the same thing. We're going to read through everything in there and then close a directory and then we'll return. So it shouldn't be any difference. I'm just moving that out. Okay. So I know I found something. I know I'm going to have at least one directory entry. So I can say number of files plus plus. which is the thing up here, number of files, the total number of files that I'm adding from the file system, that goes up because I found something, <laughs> whether it's a dot, 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 or an actual valid directory or, or file. And I also need to add the number of blocks for that file, uh, which for, for the directory entry. So say found new file. I guess I could print the name. Just copy that. I don't know why the, the jump list wanted to go crazy there, but just wanted to bring that line back. Found new file or directory. And I could pass in, well, I could also just pass in a character if I wanted to keep that going. If I want to call stat on a file, I'm going to need the fully qualified name for my host path. So maybe it'd be better to pass in, unfortunately, a string. <laughs> And copy this back. Sorry, I have done this before, but of course it's always, it's been a couple weeks, so. Unfortunately. I don't know if this will be any better than what I did before anyway, but that's alright. Oh, that's okay. This will be a constant, actually. Hopefully, well, I might need it later, actually, but... Hopefully I don't mess with it too much. All right, could not open directory. This will be S. This will be a little bit more dynamic there as well. Okay, still found those, all right. That way we can say we found these things, but I'll have to add it on my directory path to be able to get the size anyway. So I can have a name here. And we'll make it, I don't know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have any super long paths right now, so I, I think 512 would be alright, or 1024, it's not great. And this is going to be on the stack. But this is in my build system, on my host, and the stack will be at least like a meg, so that's fine. So that should be okay, I'll probably want to mem set that. Or I can just make that overall, that'd be easier. Yeah, I'll make that a global. Not great, but we'll make that a global. So this will be for every new file that's found. I guess to make it easier, we'll just set it all to, we'll blank it out and override it. Not great, but that's okay. Uh, we have the size as well. So zero, size of, temp name. Okay. That'll be kind of slow, but, but that's okay. So I can string copy and do things. I can string copy a couple times. I could try to be fancy with it and do like, Maybe sn print f. That's into temp name. I don't remember. Don't remember the exact arm order for that. Sn print f is that. We have a size. We have a certain size. That's size of. And we have the character format. So into that variable, I can put percent s and then slash and percent s. And then I can put the values for that. Because I'm passing in without a final slash. Okay, that'll be alright. I'll add the slash after. That's going to be whatever directory we're currently in, which is directory path. And then whatever name we're currently on. It's going to be directory entry. The name. And then I can say I found temp name here. So it'll be fully qualified. And the reason I have to do that. To get the fully qualified name is that I need to pass that 
In my case, I'm going to pass it to stat to get the number of bytes for the length of the file. Although I could, I could search it. I could open the file and go to the end and go to the front, you know, to get the length. But I want to get the total number of bytes that the file takes up to turn that into blocks to add to file blocks. That's the whole point of me doing this. I'll say found that. So what does that look like so far? Found bin fs root dot 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 system user. That's good. Or an xpx character two. Just fix that. Name is just. Oh, I don't want a thousand twenty four pointers. No, that would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. There we go. Dot 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 system user. Okay. So I found a new file. All right. So size of file would be stat. I should quit closing this terminal window if I have to keep looking at it, but that's all right. It saves my thing I was looking at too. That's nice. I have sysstat, yes, okay. So I call an lstat, or F, I guess fstat, that's an fd. No, just stat takes the name, and we need a stat buffer. Does it return that? It returns an int, but it takes in a stat buffer. Okay. So struct stat, I'll just say file, file stat. I'll just blank that out. And we'll stay, we'll say stat. What does that return? Like a negative one. I don't care. Well, I need to know what they contain, don't I? Or does it matter? <laughs> Lstat is identical, except it's for symlinks. Fstat returns this. C stat three type. Okay, so I'll have to look at that. So zero is return on success, on error negative one. Okay, so if stat given our name, temp name and the buffer, which would be file stat, if that is less than zero or if that's negative one, then that would be an error. Could not get stat 4% S. Okay. All right, but assuming we got that into there, I need to get size from stat struct. That is in three type, it said. So man, three type stats. Yeah, okay, interesting. Three type is kind of awkward, but that's all right. So what do I need? I need the total size. So the block size is in well, it probably is in 4K blocks, which is what I'm going to use. But let's say we get either the number of sectors or the size in bytes here. So ST size, which is an offset. But file blocks is going to be plus equal that size in bytes. That'll be file stat. That'll be ST size. And I can do bytes to blocks of st size and that'll be all right size from stat struct in blocks and to total okay so that adds it to the total but that only gets everything under a base directory which all the files and directories there is fine i don't necessarily need to add probably dot and dot dot well right here i do later on i won't i can skip over and add them once but I'm trying to think how I'm going to add the file data later. Um, I guess I'll do that in a bit. So if I have this, uh, I have the size, I have the name for everything under under one directory, the one that's passed in. How do I how do I nest this or recurse or do whatever I want to do to read through multiple directories? Well, I just read through. If it is a directory, I can call this function again, and it'll close it at the end when it's done. So that'll be all right. Simple enough. So I found directory read through its files, it is its files as well. And we'll use recursion for that just to be fancy with it. it. makes it a little bit simpler here. If you have arbitrary nesting down to, I don't know, hundreds of, of paths deep, you, you probably we need a different setup, but I'm not going to have a super deep file tree, at least for a while. So maybe ever, I don't know, <laughs> at least initially. 
so I shouldn't have to worry about that too much. And the stack is going to be pretty large on modern systems. And anyway, my host, I think Linux, it's like 8 meg by default. That shouldn't be too bad here. So if I want to do that, we'd call get file info on whatever the path is, which is going to be temp name, because that's the name of whatever file we're on. Could be a directory. We just have to see. I guess I'll call that. I'll say if not that, because we need to, re we need to uh, propagate errors and such. Propagate return values. So if not, get info, temp name, I'll return false. Okay, so how do I determine if it's a directory? We can check the either from the stat struct or from the directory entry, either one. I believe we can do dtype, and if it equals dtreg, it's a file, or dir, it's a directory. I don't remember. Read directory, probably. So I don't do that. <laughs> I thought it was D type. I guess not. We should use read directory through. Oh, is this a different one? Yeah. Man, three read directory. All right. Unsigned char, D type. Not supported by all types. Well, I'm going to assume it's supported. Yeah, dt underscore dir is a directory. Okay. Quit out of there. Okay, so that should read through multiple and recurse. So let's just see. Mm. It finds the same thing repeatedly. Oh, well, that's not good, is it? Oh, that's not good. Oh, if it's a dot or a dot dot, I don't, I don't want to do a dot and that'll read itself. A dot dot will read the parent. So I do want to add them to begin with. I mean, I could just add those by default and just skip them in here. That, that would be fine as well. So if it matches, we'll say not string in compare directory entry d name, and that would be the dots for two characters because we'll have an implicit null byte there. We'll say or... Um, three characters there. So if it equals one of those two, I'll just continue. Because I don't want to, I don't want to do those. And two of those bars there. Okay. So I need to add those to begin with though. So we'll do num files. I know I'm in a directory here and we open the directory and by default, I'm going to have the dot and dot dot entries. I'll just add those here. We'll say dot and dot dot directory entries and file blocks. Well, I'm assuming there'll be one block by default because I'm just I'm just doing one block for my local file system. That's the data I'm getting here. So we'll do that. Add to totals for these directory entries. Okay, and then we'll read through, and if we find either one, we'll just continue so we don't keep rereading them. That would be bad. <laughs> but if we find something that isn't one of those two, and it is a directory, we want to go through that one as well. Add these for there, go through it, so on and so forth. When we get through reading the directory, we'll close it out. That should be okay. Uh, DNS domain name. Ooh, we got some memory leaks there. Could not get stat for DNS domain name. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good at all. I'm running into all kinds of errors. That's great. That's C programming for you. Well, we found the system directory. It just had to go within there. What is the issue there, huh? We found a directory path that we passed in. If it is a directory, that should be one. It should get file info there, and then it stopped. So under sys, we have bin and docs. But obviously that didn't work. And this is while there's still stuff to read, we read the next thing in this directory. We would get a new pointer for each nested directory we're reading. Temp name would be a new thing here. 
I guess if it only keeps elongating, we don't need to do this. Well, print F we do, but the name will probably end with a null, so we probably don't need to memset that actually. But anyway, we'd recurse back up after we do this. I guess then, well, the name mightn't be bad. We'd have the new name. We'd keep adding on to it. Do I just need to do string cat? Actually, probably, well, that's going directly into temp name. That's probably okay. That's interesting, though. Could not get stat for that, so why did it get a random thing for stat? That means temp name was wrong. Let's do some... Do some uh, initial print debugging here. Open directory, whatever we got. Found bin, file system, root system, open the directory system, found slash bin. That's why. Yeah, it's opening my local one. So I don't need to do that, I'm cutting it off. Which is interesting. So temp name is slash bin. You didn't give me this, which is the initial directory path. So what do we pass in? We pass in temp name. That's interesting. So this is the full path here. I found slash bin underneath that. That should be okay. I don't know why this cuts off from this. That's interesting. S and printf shouldn't increment by that. I don't think it does. Oh, am I going to have to do off-screen debugging so I'm not here for five hours? Probably. <laughs> it's not optimizing that away. That is just an array that I'm writing directly to every time. Maybe that's not the best. I guess if I'm saving the same thing and I'm overriding it, that's not good. I need the I need it to be localized. So that it's not overwritten every time. That could be it. I mean, that could be it. Which isn't great. I don't want to malloc repeatedly. Well, this isn't great. I don't want it to be that. I can try 512 if it's not too big. This just, this isn't great. But at least it would ensure I have the same one here and then that the same one is kept within each call stack. So it's 512 bytes per call stack. Or well, per function invocation. If I have a bunch of directories and it's very deep, that's going to add up pretty quickly. That's why I don't like doing this. But if we do this, we at least ensure that it's consistent between function calls, which I think is the issue, because it's overriding and then maybe going back up or back down and doing some bad things there. So I'll have a new one every time. Okay, yeah, that works. So we open the root directory, we found system, we open the system directory, we found the bin directory underneath there, we open that. Within that, we found all these bin files. We went back up after we closed that directory because we found all of these. Found the docs file, it only has test in there. Went back up, found user, which we found docs underneath there, opened that, found that file, and then closed them. Okay. So that seems to work. Let's say I know I opened it, so that'll reduce some noise for that. Okay, so this just says what we found here. And I could say it's a, it's a file or a directory. It doesn't really matter. So we'll just say, uh, let's say else if probably. I'm just gonna print, print out the same thing here. It doesn't matter that much. So I'll say if it's a directory, found directory. If it's a file, I'm just going to say we found a file. That way it's a little bit easier when there's a bunch of files. The noise will be a little clearer. But we know we've found it. Set new qualified name for stats. Stat call. Okay. So that just finds a directory. Well, what if we find a file under there? It's not going to be directory, it's going to be dt reg. It would help if I did things right the first time. <laughs> so 
we found these directories, we find the files within there, then we recurse back up and go down. So I think that's a depth first search is what this is technically. 67 boot blocks overall. Okay, so that gets the total number of files that I guess I could print out. Do we have the total number of files? No, total disk blocks we do. File blocks will include the boot block, might as well. Well, yeah, it doesn't really matter. We're going to include them in the file system anyway, but that's probably all right. So I'll say total, total number of files, percent D, I guess I made that a U int, percent U. And file blocks, all right. So that'll be num files and file blocks. Okay. I just want that printed at the end so I can check here of 29, which that seems a bit high, but it does include the dot and dot dot within these. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, plus two for directory. So it's 19, 21, 23, 25, 27. And I guess the initial root also has two, so that would be 29, that's true. I mean, I could print that I found those, I just don't want to repeatedly get them, you know what I mean? That's why I'm doing this. We could say we found that. I guess I don't want to include that. Well, I want to include them in the blocks, maybe not in the files, because we would have already included these. These are all the directories. So the, the dot would be the current directory that's already included as a file when we go through and read the files within there. And dot dot is a parent directory, which even if we're at root, it's already been included by the time we reach the point at which we're considering this. So actually, I don't want to add the files. We'll add it for each thing that isn't this. But that would be more accurate. Oh. So that says 17. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah. And those will be, these dot dots and dots are just going to be implicit as part of pathing. I won't need to include those, but the total file blocks will be included for all of these and the directories. Directories will be one block, probably. Am I doing that? That's a good question. Well, I'm getting the, yeah, since I'm getting the size, it would include them. And the size should be, like in Linux, the dot and dot dot are going to be 4K. That's what I'm looking at. I don't want human readable 4096. That's the same as, as mine. I suppose I could check if it's less than, just in case, and add one by default. Because I'm only going to add one for a directory. Really? So instead of doing this, we'll say if... Um, I can add it here, really. If it's a directory, I'm just going to add one, because mine are only going to be one block. If it's not a directory, we'll add this. And that should be okay. I can make that look maybe a little bit better. Not really, but... So we'll say if it's a regular file, we'll add that. Else if... Else if it's a directory, I'm just going to have things be one block by default. Uh, by default, I suppose. Probably need to do it a little bit better, but I think that makes sense. Well, they could be more than one, actually. It depends on the number of directory entries they have, I suppose. So we might have to add that after. I would have to read through all the files. That wouldn't even be these two, really. I mean, they would be probably 4K. Uh, what do I need to consider here? <laughs> If we have more than 60, if we have more than directory entries per block amount of directory entries inside of a directory, it would be more than one block. So it actually wouldn't just be one by default, it would be however many entries are within it, you know, divided by that value, or modulo, whatever. So I would have to do that after I get everything in there, maybe close the directory. I'd probably have to do that first, and then I'd have to read through the files and get their size and do that stuff. Yes. 
So then I don't even have to do this stuff, really. I just have to count the number of files. Locally and globally. Kind of doing this as I go, sorry about that. I should be more prepared for this stuff. Um, so this stuff isn't good. Let me write this down or else my brain's going to not, not remember. But let's get local, this directory, number of files, determine this directory's size and bytes and blocks, which will be uh, directory entries for block. You know, files divided by, divided by, and modulo that. And add to global num files when done. Okay. So I won't need to do these. I can still skip them here. That's fine. They'll count, they'll count as directory entries. Ah, okay. So what do I need to do? Let's just, we'll add to the number of files probably. Or not. No, I don't want to add to the number of files. <laughs> it's not dot and dot dot will add to the number of files, which I'm doing here anyway. And I do want to go through. I just won't need the stat. I'll do this later. I'll get the stat later. I'll just determine right now just the number of files in a directory. We'll, we'll get the stat and the size when I'm writing the actual file data. Right now I'm just determining overall what I need to write later on. Let's keep it simpler and do that. If it's a regular type file, I don't care. <laughs> if it's a directory, then we'll add one and we'll get the file info for that, which is just the number of files. Okay, so I'll do that. And when we close it, I know we're done. So let's have a local number of files. Let's say it's a 32-bit here. We'll say directory files. Dot and dot dot won't really count because they'll be implicitly for the directory and in pathing. They're not really distinct entities otherwise but I will need to add them for the number of entries in the directory. Let's say entries. I know I'm doing that. The naming will be confusing, but yeah, I'll do that. Default is only dot and dot dot. Entries, okay. I'll say default empty directory. Empty directory is only those two. If we read them, we'll skip. Otherwise, we get this stuff. Num files will increase for the number in there, probably. And we'll know it's... Yeah, that'll be okay. And we'll increase that as well. That's a local count. For this directory. We get the size. Read through its files as well. Okay. But this will be a new value inside of this function, so the next call stack for this will be a new value for that directory, so that'll be okay. Okay. So then we know the size. I guess I will need that. Well, I could add the size, actually. I do need to get the size first, don't I? <laughs> that sucks. That's okay. We'll get the size for the directory after. If it's a file, then yeah, we'll, we'll do that. So I do, I do actually need to do what I was doing. And that was stat, so I need to get stat again. Uh, that's okay. Struct, stat, file, stat. If stat of temp name. I like when I erase things and have to redo it later. Isn't it great? Not great at all. Not great at all. Temp name. Okay. If it's a regular file. Bytes to blocks. File stat st size. That's okay. Let's if it's a directory. Read through those files. Okay, then we can get the size. Get size for this directory. And blocks. 
Okay. So we'll need the number of bytes, which instead of that will be the number of directory entries multiplied by the size of directory entry T, which is 64 bytes, but that's fine. Okay. So that's the number in bytes, that many directories by the size of a directory in bytes. That's how many entries are in this directory, which I start at two for dot and dot dot. Okay, I add one for all the files we find within that directory that aren't dot and dot dot, because they're already included by this. And we get the ones under there, close the directory, get the blocks. Okay, that should be more accurate and it's actually less, 56, because <laughs> I'm not including a bunch of stuff I don't need to, probably. That's how I determine the size of my directories in my local on the disk image, that file system. I don't just have 4K for a, a directory entry. I have the entry itself, which is 64 bytes, and all those directory entries together comprise the file data for the file, and thus its size. So yeah, this is less than it was before, which is good. That's 17 total files. So for example, the root directory has system and user directories. Those are two directory entries plus the dot and dot dot. So that would be four directory entries, which would be 64 bytes. So probably 256 for that. In terms of blocks, that'll be one block by default. So instead of these taking up, you know, one block each as they were, well, I guess they will be one block. Sometimes they could be more. Anyway, this one might've been more. Whatever. <laughs> I'm confusing myself. That should get the total number of files and blocks. So we can go on to do Probably write inode and data blocks. I'll do that. So I'm going to read through everything again, basically, and do all that stuff, which means I'll need a sort of driver for that. This function was the driver for this, because this thing can call itself repeatedly. I'll have to do a similar thing. From what I remember doing this before, which was a few weeks ago, so I don't really remember it, <laughs> I had a different function for that. Um, for calling itself repeatedly. So this would be the driver for that. And I'll get rid of this code in the future, this commented out stuff. Just leaving it there for now. So, you know, write inode and data blocks. Do disk image. This will actually write to the image. The other one was just getting metadata to use for other parts of the file system that are written to the image, mainly the super block. And we'll say by default, that's going to be good. Okay. And we won't need to do cleanup because we're closing the directory and I'll open and close the files within another function. All right. So how do I do this? I'll probably open it and write the data. I guess it'll be similar. It'll be similar to this function, really. I'll just do other, do other stuff. <laughs> so I get, yeah, because I close it when I'm done. So I'm going to have some redundancy. I probably could clean up and streamline this stuff, but I don't want to think about it right now. So that's okay. And it needs to be defined before this, if I do it this way. So instead of get file info, I'll call it write, write files. I don't know, write file data. For a, for a directory, under a directory. Inode and data blocks. Uh, or I'll say add data for all files in a directory. Okay. The disk image. So we're given a directory. I'll still do this stuff. I guess I'll need the entries to know how much to write. We probably will have some, some duplication, unfortunately, but that's, that's okay. So we'll still do that. So we'll say if we could not do that, turn false. Add all files, directories under root as new initial file system. Okay, so after that, we'll have to pad out though. Pad out disk image to final size. And we'll have the total number of disk blocks, right? Well, I don't have it here. Well, I have the disk size. Okay, so I can get that again, I guess. Or we could cache the value, but that's all right. 
we'll have disk blocks, that'll be, mm, yeah, bytes to blocks of the disk size, which we want to set later. And we'll need to know how big the image is to begin with. So that's the total size we want to write out to. Yeah, so I need the difference in what we wrote, which I haven't done yet in this function, to what we want to write out to. So diff will be minus some value. And I'll have a thing to do that. So I equals zero, I less than the difference in blocks. And we'll do the F right again, just wherever the last thing I had was for that. I won't do the boot block, I'll do within the image, or the image pointer. So I want to write to the image pointer. I need to write nothing, probably pad it out. I, have a null, I do have a null block, there we go. Nice, and that should be, that's an array, so that'll be a pointer. Write one block, which will be the size of it. To the image pointer, assert that that's one. Cool, okay. So that'll just fill out with zeros or nulls to the end of the disk. So how do we know what we want to do to get that difference? I have to get the size that we're, we're currently at for the image pointer, which is just ftel, wherever we are. That says how far we're currently along in the disk image. I'll say current, uh, current byte or current size for the disk image. And then we need bytes to blocks for that. So it wouldn't be current size, it would be, well, I can just put that directly into there, really. Okay. Yeah, this size minus wherever we're currently at, and for that difference, we'll pad out. All right. Not great, and it'll run that other thing twice, but that's okay. Not right file data, turn false, 409, this. Um, let's say right now I don't do anything. Well, it doesn't matter. It's duplicate logic, but that's fine. So it'll, it'll you know, do the found stuff twice. <laughs> but the total blocks are going to be 360. We wrote 56, so assuming those things are, are correct, we should fill it out with, like, whatever that difference is, 304 blocks. Although I found before, I remember from my testing, it actually doesn't really fill that out all the way, which isn't necessarily an issue. But, oh, this time it does. No, never mind. That was before I fixed the, the offset issue for the first data bit, where I fixed that bug at the, at the start of this video. That was before that. So this should be like 1.44 megs, I think, right? Or 360 disk blocks, which they're each 4K. I can determine that by, let's run dc-e, let's say, well, whatever that value is. What is it? Control F, I can go into here? Yes. So can I paste in the thing? No. I think it was 1474560, something like that. And we'll just divide by my, my block size. And if you enter your thing in, okay. Press enter, 360. Yeah, so that's good. Okay. That is the right size. I had messed up on that before in the past, so I wanted to make sure that was okay. I'll still have issues later where nothing will work, but so far so good. So what I need to do now is actually write the data. So I can get the number of files first and just go through those, or I can do like I'm doing here, and that's probably okay. Really, I can do the same thing, I just have to add to it. So I probably could combine stuff into one overall function. I don't know I'm thinking about it, but that's all right. Let's just do this to do or fill out. Assuming I've written the directory entries, I'll have to pad out. Pad out to end of file block for this directory. And I'll have to write data for the files themselves if we found the file, because I'll have the stat. Add this file to file system. So I know I found a directory entry, I don't need to add these two. And I'll need the name, but I have the D name, so that's okay. I'll add directory entry for this file. If I'm going to be writing the file data itself, I'll have to save where I'm at. If this seems a bit scattered, I apologize, I'm just remembering what I've, what I've done before. 
I'll have to add a directory entry for the newly found file, but if I'm adding this directory will have its own data associated with it in the disk image. In the, in the data blocks in the file system on the disk image, the directory, its data is going to be these directory entries, but the file data of which I'm adding a directory entry for is going to be, you know, whatever file it is that will have its own data at another spot in the disk blocks in the data blocks rather in the disk image. And that spot will not be the same as where this directory is that I'm writing the entries for. So I'll have to save the position that I'm currently at and restore it later. I'll just add that as a to do here. Save current position in directory for next directory entry. And then I'll have to restore that when I'm done after this point or after I'm done writing the files, probably. And then we'll just go do this and the value would be restored. Yeah. I'll say restore. Or no, that'll be after this point. After we're doing all this, probably. Because we'll have gotten past there. Yeah, I'd restore there. Okay. So I think I can do this the same way. And this, yeah, duplicating is not great. But we found the directories in the file. I guess I could, I already know I found these. I could just write data after I write them, probably and not do this stuff, and I won't add to the files again. Current directory entries I can. The files I won't add. I'll do it like down here. I guess we've found that. Um, it doesn't really matter. I could print the sizes of these. I guess it doesn't matter. I could add that in later. Keep it simpler. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that much. You know, we'll just have the names. I can get rid of the names printing twice, but we don't need to, we could just say we wrote these, I guess. Well, then I would need the size, wouldn't I? I don't know. <laughs> it's whatever. Is that all I have to do though? Add directory entry. Well, we need to add the dot and dot dot entries actually. I'll have to add those for this directory. I'm trying to lay out what I need to do first. I don't miss anything. Add the directory entry for this file. Get the current position for that. Add the local count. Get the size. Don't need to add the total. Just get the size from stat. It's a regular file. I don't need to add to file blocks. I have to add this file to file system. So I'll say add file inode. And we'll have to add file data. So I'll have to add the inode first to begin with. Um, that's for the file. I'll probably have to add directory. Yep. Add directory inode. And add directory entry data for those. Okay. File inode and file data itself. And then I'll have to pad out to the end of the block. Is there all going to be at least one block size in the file system? It'll be end of data block, technically. And if we found a directory, we'll have to go through it as well. Okay. And then after we're done adding the entry and all the files for that, when we're closing this directory, we want to store the position because we're still in the loop. Pass these two. Okay, I think that's all I have to do, really. Also, I have to add a note here. The file is the third stage bootloader, third stage.bin. Use specific inode2. So that boot sector continues to work and booting can be simpler. Okay. So I'm specifically putting the third stage at inode2. Inode 0 is invalid. It'll be used for invalid calculations later. If we don't find anything, the inode would be 0 that's returned, for example. Inode 1 is the root directory, always. Since we're starting at the root directory, the first time I go through this and I add the inode, it'll be at 1. I'll probably have to add a running count for that as well, though, but that's okay. Um, and then after that, inode 2 is for the bootloader. Uh, everything else can be for whatever files. I just need to make sure that those are always there, so that's okay. And if that file data is going to be set up correctly, then the third stage bootloader should still work to be able to find the kernel. 
and a font at a given path. And the, fa the path will be different. It'll be under that system bin folder instead of just the root folder. So I'll have to remember to change that later. Source, third stage, which I probably don't have. Oh, I did put to do's here, right? Yeah. Use this when make disk.c is ready. Okay. Okay, so I'll continue with this either in a second for you, regardless, or me if I want to continue tonight or do it tomorrow or whenever. But I'm going to do this stuff next. I think I've laid out all the logic I need to do. It's not that much. I just have to go through it in my brain and maybe sleep on it to make sure it's all right and not missing anything. So <laughs> I'll be back either in a second after a break and some water or, you know, when I get back to this. So thanks for watching so far. See you soon. All right, going to continue with this. See how long this takes to finish out the video. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. I did add a couple of notes and sort of comments here since the last part that I did. Only a couple areas, though. I think I prefixed them with just the new here, and it's only within the one function that I was working on. So I will have to add an inode in the data for a directory and for the files in that directory. And we're reading this again recursively for each directory we found. I want to add an inode for that and the data for that, consisting of directory entries for the files and then the file data themselves. So to, to know how big a directory is, to know how many blocks to fill out as part of the inode that I'm going to fill out for the directory, I will have to read through it at least once initially. I could try to do it at the same time, but I figure it's easier to just read through it once, get the total number of files, determine the directories from that, sort of with a for loop here. And that would be okay. Just a really simple one. I mean, it's a little bit duplicated because I'm going to have to loop through it again anyway, but I can always rewind the directory after that. So that'll be okay. If I look at man rewind directory, it just resets to the beginning of the directory stream wherever we're at. So that'll be all right. That's why I looked that up. I was like, we have rewind for a file pointer. Why not a directory pointer? Well, we do. It's just called rewind directory as well as some nice artifacting over here on the side of the screen. Get that off. Okay, so we can rewind after we read through a directory to get the total number of entries, which will include the dot and dot dot because they're included by default. To get the total number, number of entries, we need that to determine the size and blocks for the inode for the directory and the extent within there, the length and blocks within that extent. That's the whole purpose of doing this first here so I can get the total number and then we'll add the inode here somewhere down here we'll have extent zero length and blocks and that will equal sort of bytes to blocks of all the entries here multiplied by our size of an entry so this is probably what I'll end up using but I'll just put it there and that'll be you know part of other stuff and after that before we write the inode but that's the whole purpose of that i'll rewind and then we'll go through the logic that i had before i think these are the same i added a little file blocks thing there if it wasn't there before so when we add the file inode again the third stage will be at a specific one when we add the file data i'll probably just add some some flavor text here to say we wrote the file as well as how many blocks it is in size size and bytes and blocks Save and restore the position. Then I'll also do the same thing for the overall directory. So this time I just got the directory size. <laughs> I figure I was going to do that, which I got up above anyway, and then we can get the bytes to blocks and we'll add that. So probably not that, probably just this, because that'll be the size of the directory for all the entries in there. And then we'll pad that out and say we wrote that many bytes. So I can probably move this up here after we get the initial directory entries, I can just put that there so I don't have to do it down at the bottom. Because we already know how many entries we're going to add, it's just reading through the second time and the directory adds those files, but we're not going to add any more directory entries. We already got those through that first loop up there. So I really don't need to do this twice. I only need to do it once, which is directory size. And that's probably what the other, <laughs> the other line was here that I deleted because I didn't read. Okay, but I can just do that later to increase the file blocks and write out that stuff. All right, but I do want to add the file data itself and the inodes and things to actually fill out the data blocks on the disk, so I'll try and do that. So if we know 
the size and bytes of the thing that we're adding, we can go ahead and add an inode. So it'll be directory inode, but I'll just, I guess, call it the normal one. That's fine. I guess it doesn't matter. I'll be adding a file one down here anyway, so I might as well, might as well make them a little bit different. That'll be okay. So we can set up an initial one, or we can do it line by line. I guess it kind of depends. We have this. The values dependent on that aren't bad. I'm just going back. I kept this stuff here for a reason, so I can remember all what I had to fill out. Which is probably just this stuff here, really. But I can also remember, according to the header file, what all I have to do. We need an ID, a type, size and bytes and sectors, timestamp, extents, and I'm not going to fill out the other things. We don't have it open for reference count. So yeah, that should be all all that we need there. So these don't need to be separate, really. So we do need an overall inode ID starting at the root directory. I suppose I need to add that. I could have it just be a global, which is fine. It's not great though, but that's okay. We'll have inode ID or next, um, next ID, next inode. That makes a little bit more sense. It's the next one. It'll start at one because one will be the root directory and inode zero will be an invalid inode used for some calculations later if we don't find an inode that we're looking for within the OS for some operation that'll correspond to inode 0, which isn't going to be a real valid one. inode 1 will be valid, it'll be the root, so I'll just have it be there. Although root's going to be 1, yeah, this this is going to be fine. I, normally I'd say I can increment, I just, I can't use inode 2 because that's for the bootloader. So I'm trying to think what the best thing would be here. <laughs> I can just increment past 1 or start at 3 or something. Hmm. Or I can add the root inode outside of that function first, and then just start at 3. We'll see. So I'll, def I'll just say default starting inode will be, uh, will be for the root directory at id 1. That seems alright. Okay. So this will add and it'll go past it. I guess otherwise we just go there, so... Other things are just going to increment. Yeah, this the only reason this doesn't work is because I need a special inode for the boot, the third stage bootloader, which is inode 2. So I don't really want to do this. Otherwise, this is really great. <laughs> so that just, that kind of sucks. So how should I get around that? I can't just increment. Otherwise, I could just start at 3. And I could increment here. Hmm. Because I'm assuming we're passing in the root directory to begin with. I get all the entries for the root directory, I add that in. I suppose we could just check and have, have an extra condition here that runs every time, which isn't great, but that's all right. We know the root directory is never going to be the bootloader, so really that's okay. So I can probably set this to 3 by default, actually. I'll just say after, after root directory and bootloader. So I'll do that. We'll have one and two. I'll say ID equals one and two. Okay, so it's not great, but that's all right. I guess I can do all these by separate lines. That's fine. Instead of being fancy with the initializer there. Okay, so let's just say I would have to know if we're at the root or not. We'll say if not, string compare, string in compare, whatever file that we passed in, whatever directory we passed in. If that's the root directory, I want to use the root inode, which I could add. <laughs> could add other stuff for that, like defines or constants. Probably wouldn't be too bad. Say the root inode's going to be 1. Just so I don't have magic numbers later. Bootloader inode is going to be two. We'll just do that. So it's not, if not string compare, whatever path we passed into this function. Well, the path, I guess, would be just fs root would be the initial path. Right? Yeah, that's the initial path there for the root directory. So if we're on the root directory, so this is kind of bad to be running every time this is called, but oh well. 
The length would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I guess 15 with the null byte. Might want to add ID. I'll add ID to these. Might be better as an enum value, but that's okay. So it's not an inode, it's the ID for that inode. All right, else we'll just set it to the next one. And then we'll increment that count. So that'll be all right. I don't need a semicolon there. All right, so we'll add inode for this directory that we're doing. So we have the total size there. Except I need to add directory to these. So we have the ID, the file type will be file type directory, which I think is what I called it. Yeah, directory. The size and bytes will be whatever size we got up here for the directory. The size and sectors is going to be size and sectors of that size, because that is in bytes. Last modified timestamp, yeah, will be 420 elite, but I'll update the year almost the next year, so maybe I can increment that again, but that's all right. This is just to be fun. I could get the current date and time from the system, but I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> I'll just have it be funny. Funny numbers. So the first extent is the only thing we're going to need. The first block will be whatever the first block is set to. What is that initially set to? The first data block? And then we increment it by the number of blocks in that directory. So I will have to set that up as well. I don't have a sort of first block thing here because I did it right there. Hmm. These things I shouldn't make, I shouldn't make all these things global, but that is, uh, okay. <laughs> we'll set it to this value initially, yeah, which is the first data block plus the extent. Let's put that down before I call that function where I'm writing the file data. Make sure my head's not in the way. I'll set the first block there first. Okay. So be first data block start writing new file data at. Okay, so before we call this function to fill out the inode and data blocks, I want to set that equal to wherever we want to start, which is going to be the first data block. And then after that, we'll increment it by the amount that we're going to write, but it'll start at the first data block to start off. So that's the first available position to write file data at or say on disk, it starts writing new file data. That's what that is. Okay. And we'll have found that from the super block, first data block, which is gonna be here, which is right after the inode blocks, and that will be set before this function is called. Yeah, so that should be all right. That's why I left the commented out code there, so I remembered how that worked. So this will be equal to that. Then we'll increment it by this length here, because that'll be the position where we're going to write the next file data, the first available position that is. Bytes to blocks, we can do again directory size. Okay. So I have the length in blocks here from that size. All right, so we can increment this. Set next position, start writing a new file at. Should be directory inode extent zero dot first block plus the lengthen blocks. Well, actually, we already set it equal to the first block. We would just add the lengthen blocks here. It can all be contiguous. And we'll, we'll have to update this for the, the file data that we write as well. This is just the initial directory. Okay. So we're going to go through, we're going to find everything we need as far as size is concerned, write an inode for this directory that we're adding. If it's the root inode, get the root ID, else we'll get whatever the next one is, which will start at 3. So it'll overpass the, the bootloader. We'll fill out the data for that. It's a directory. Okay, I'll set the next position to write at, and we'll add directory entries 
I guess that director entries for dot and dot dot. So we'll have to go, we need to write the inode as well. Which I can do, this is where we're going to write the data, so I don't need to use that, but we need to write the inode, yeah. Write inode to disk image. So how do I do that? I need to go to its position on the disk, which would be fseek. That would be our image pointer. And I wouldn't seek zero, I'd seek to an absolute position, which should be seek set. And that absolute position would be wherever the inode blocks are at. So it'd be super block, first inode block, and it would be offset by whatever our inode number is, which is going to be the ID, which for the root is going to be the root, so we don't really need to do this rigmarole, but for other ones it won't be. Is it just ID? Yeah, not inode ID. To get the the inode block that we can offset from, I think we have, I don't remember, is it inodes per block? I don't know if it's FS or not. Inodes per sector. I don't think I have inodes per block, do I? I have directory entries per block, I have inodes per sector, so I could convert it to a sector or sectors per block which I already have, or I can just add another one here. Because the first inode block is in terms of disk blocks, so I figure everything should be in terms of disk blocks here, so I can just add another sort of, not macro, but a constant value. So this is gonna be block size, not sector size, divided by the size of inode t. It'll all still be sort of powers of two, so that should still work out. So an inode 64 bytes, that's 4096. So there might be like, what, 16? Or whatever, it should be sector times 4, whatever that is. It's maybe 64. <laughs> we'll have the ID times inodes per block. Hopefully this will work. So that'll get the inode block that we need to go to, although if I'm F-seeking, it needs to be in terms of bytes, probably. So we need to multiply that by the block size, because that'll turn it into bytes. That's the number of blocks we have to offset from zero, but I have to turn that offset in blocks to an offset in bytes for F-seek as an absolute value to seek to. So that's why I'm multiplying it by the block size, which is 4096. So if we're just going to one, the first inode block is after the boot block and the super block and the data and bitmap blocks. So it should be at four. So this should be four plus one. So maybe that's not actually correct. <laughs> four plus one would be five. It'd be block five and not block four, which would be correct. Is that right? So we'd have the boots, we'd have the super block, we'd have the inode bitmap and the data bitmap, but the boot would be at zero. The first inode should be at block four, so how do I get it from there? Because that, that is not correct, actually. But I know I have to offset from here. How do I do calculations anymore? I don't know. Size and offset calculations, that is. I don't know. Oh, this should be divided by. Should this be divided by? Probably. Yes. So if the inode is in the first block, we do divide, not multiply. Because we can go from inode 0 to 63 if it's 64 per block. And this would be 0, but inode 64 would be in the second block and we would have to offset one block from the start. Yeah, yeah, I would divide, not multiply. Yeah, should divide, not multiply. Then that would be 4 plus 0, which would be 4, that would be correct. Multiply by the block size, yep. Okay, so that gets the absolute block and then I want to offset within that block which I could do directly by F-seeking, or I could F-seek again, seek current. For example. And that would be the ID modulo, uh, inodes per block. So that gets it in terms of, of inode size. I still have to, I think, multiply that and convert it to bytes, which would be size of inode t. So 
So for inode is one, this would be one times size of inode T. If it's two, it'd be two up to, you know, say there's 64 inodes per block, zero to 63. At 64, this would be one. So actually that's not good, is it? <laughs> well, but then it would be one block over. So no, that would, that would work. Yeah, yeah, this would work. Okay, I could put this stuff behind a macro probably. I could call it like inode to absolute offset or something, or I can do this, because this might be wrong. I'm just thinking, I think this is correct though. So that seeks to the position on the disk. Now if we want to write it, we would F write that. I always, I always forget the, the order that arguments go, that's why I copied that. So I'd F write the inode, the inode itself. So to block size, probably do size of, size of directory inode, we'd write one of those to the image pointer at the current position that it's at for that inode in the inode blocks. And I would want to make sure that we write one of those, okay. And directory entries, we would go and seek to those as well. That would be the data blocks, which is easier because those are just a singular block offset. They're not, they're not within a block like I have to do here. They're just at the, the block boundary itself. So they're aligned on a block boundary. So that, that one's a little bit easier. We can F seek, seek set again, but we can just do the inode first block because that's where the data is going to be written at that first block in the first extent. So extent zero, first block, and then we'd multiply that by the block size because we have to convert that to bytes. Okay, so then we can write the directory entries here. Directory entry T, my own directory entry. So it's kind of confusing because there's another one here. The naming isn't great, but that's my own personal one for the file system, which is 64 bytes and just has an ID and a name. Yeah, right here, just an ID and a 60 character name. So it's 64 bytes there. We'll see, I can have that be zero, that's fine. So the ID is going to be the ID of the corresponding inode, which for the root would be root, else it'd be the next. So that'd be the directory inode ID. And it depends what we're writing for this. So I'm considering the dot right now, not the dot dot. The singular dot corresponds to the current directory. That's why I'm doing this for this directory itself. Right, so dot equals current or this directory. And then we'd have the name, and I'll just string copy into there probably. So name we would put, I guess the directory path here. Actually no, name would be dot or dot dot. I'm thinking later on for the files. <laughs> so that's fine, we can just put a dot in there. And assume that we write everything okay. The directory entry size of directory entry one. And then for dot dot we can do Similar thing here, except, well, for root, it would be itself. Otherwise, it would be its parent. So we do need to get a parent as well. So how would I do that? <laughs> I think the way I did this before was I actually had a separate parameter to this function. Or two separate parameters for the ID we need to write and a parent inode ID we need to write. Then I wouldn't have to worry about it later, and we can update them within this function. That probably would be good. Because then if we're gonna recurse, we can keep we can keep better track of what the parent is or not. So yeah, I can I can do that. It's a bit awkward, but that's alright. I can say this ID or directory ID parent. Say current, I don't know, current inode ID. And parent inode ID. So if we assume that those are gonna be in this function. I really don't even have to add the root here. I can just do whatever we pass in and increment this for the directory or something like that. Or I can keep this code and still use it and that'll be all right. But I know the current ID, if I pass that in, I guess, how would I move this out? Current inode ID. I don't need to do that. That would simplify it. Because this is for the directory, not the file. But I suppose I would have to add add that. Hmm. I don't know. I might I might have to reconsider this later. Um, 
given that we should be able to we should be able to fill out dot and dot dot all right we would just enter whatever the current one is which would be that automatically except this for dot dot would be the parent id a lot of stuff i have to consider that i'm not smart enough to consider right now and then we'd write that now that we wrote all of those, we need to rewind, read through directory again, and add file data. Yeah, or all files in directory. Okay. Assuming we got through that, we added directory entries for these two, so we can still skip those all right. We get the current name that we're adding. We need to add an entry for that file and probably save the current position after we add that, which we'll restore later here. So I can do that, but I can add the entry first, which is just doing these two things. So the ID for the file, if it's not the bootloader, will be two, else it'll be the next one, plus, plus, or whatever. That'll be okay. And I know I need to start this off, before I forget, I need to start this off with the current and parent inode IDs. So let me do that, which would just be root for both, because root is its own parent. It reproduces by budding, it's asexual, so that's alright. <laughs> it's not funny at all, I don't know why I said that. It's like a, it's like a coral reef, kind of, not really. Uh, no, this was up here. Directory entry, so I don't need to do... I don't need that comment. Okay, so the ID that I'm going to add for this new one can probably be the next node, the the next inode ID plus plus. So that'll start at three, unless it's a bootloader. So this one I do actually need a string compare with whatever name we're doing, directory entry, temp name, or just temp name, really. Um, or we can do well. We could do either one actually. It'd be less typing there if I did this, I think. Because within the directory, it's not going to be qualified. We're qualifying it with that name through s and printf. So I can really just call it the third stage dot bin because that's what will be found. And that is 12 characters. If I want to do string n compare, I'll add one to it so it gets the, the null on the end. I don't know if I need to include the null in the end. I feel like for these I do. For the other ones, I'm not sure if I need to include the null byte in the length calculation, but oh well, we'll find out if it fails horribly. So if that matches, then the ID can be the bootloader ID, else it can be this one. Because we need a special bootloader. Okay, and then into the name, we can put not the temp name, but just the directory entry name itself. We might need to clear this out. It could be shorter or longer. If we add a name that's shorter, it should end it with a null. If we add a name that's longer, it'll overwrite that, but still end with a null. So actually that may be okay. I'm just trying, I'm trying to think if I have to mem set that to zero first. I don't think I do. I could just use the one that's set up here. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, okay, sorry. I had, had some dust in my eye. Uh, okay, so... What am I doing? <laughs> I need to add the directory entry. Let's add that, because we're still at the point in the directory that we're adding the file data. So I can actually write the file, the file data there. And then we want to save the current position. So I'll say current directory position, and that'll be wherever we're at as far as the offset for the image pointer, which we can get from ftel. And then I can just seek to that position when I want to restore after we're done writing stuff. So I'll fseek the image pointer to the current directory position. And yeah, do seek set. That way, after we write a directory entry, we're going to have to go to a different portion on the disk to write files. After we write an entry, we save the position, we restore that after, so that the next thing we read, we're adding after or at that new position, rather. 
After we add a directory, we will, we will have gone 64 bytes past the last one. So we're saving that so we can restore that position because that would be correct for the next entry that we later want to write. Should there be another file to read in this directory? Hopefully that makes sense. We get the stat for the file to get the size. I guess I do need to add to the file blocks, but I can add that sort of down here. So I don't need to do it there necessarily. If it's, if it's a regular file, it's not going to be a directory. So I don't know why I have this here. I guess just so I remembered that I was printing out data, but I'm going to print it out probably here anyway. So I don't need this. I can probably add that beforehand. Okay, so we need to add an inode for the file. I can probably reuse the inode that I'm doing for the directories. Or I can just make a new one, it doesn't really matter. I can just overwrite the values, that's fine. Or I can make a new one. I guess it would make sense if we called it like file inode instead of directory inode. That may be alright. And I'll just um, directory file. Yeah, we'll do that. Instead of file size, it'll be something else. This won't be current inode ID. This will be whatever the directory entry ID was, because this will be for the file that we're writing here. And if it's not a directory, we're, we'll be writing it. If it is a directory, we're going to recurse and get the inode for that directory up here. So I don't need to worry about adding it twice or getting the wrong directory inode versus file inode. I know it's going to be for a file here specifically, because the type is file as well. So the last directory entry that we wrote, we'll use that ID, which will be two for the bootloader if needed, and it'll be type file. It won't be directory size, it'll be whatever the file stat size is. That's ST size. We'll get that in terms of sectors as well. We'll get the date time. We'll set the first block. And we'll do length and blocks for that as well here. We are using specific inode 2. Guess I'll do that here. So if it's third stage that band, use a specific inode to the boot sector continues continues to work. And if I didn't show that before, I think I did, but I forgot. In the first boot sector where I'm loading stuff, I'm getting the first inode for the root directory and stuff, but I'm getting the bootloader inode here. So this is basically offsetting two within the first inode block. So I'm loading the first inode block from the disk image to memory, and I'm offsetting within that block to the second inode since each one is 64 bytes in size and I'm getting the location of extent 0 so I determine which block that the bootloader is at according to that inode first block uh, variable data and then I'm loading that to 50,000 and then jumping to it for second stage and other stuff yeah I'm loading that to, to 50,000 uh, the second stage is not at 50,000, it's right after the first stage, so... Okay, so yeah, that should work. And its first block would be different, but it would load the first block according to the value that I'm setting here. I just want to make sure the ID is correct, and it is. So add file data for the inode, I need to do a similar thing, like this. File data I'll do down here. So add file inode to inode blocks. So this would be file inode, not directory inode. File inode ID divided by inodes per block times the block size to get it in terms of bytes from a block. 
and then offset within that block according to the inode that we're going to. And then I want to write the inode at that location within the inode blocks. Here. And then I want to go and add the file data itself. So we'll go to the inode's extent first block. Which did I add to the first block? No. Let me do that there, because after a file, we want to set the next first block to write at as well, not just for a directory. So it's file inode extent zero first block. Yep. So we'll add the length and blocks for the next position. Okay. We'll add the data itself after we go to that block position for the first block. Okay, so we'll add the data there. So the file data I'll use will be according to how many sectors, and then we'll pad out to the end of the block, probably. It's not just, it's not just adding directory entries one at a time. It's, uh, it'll be a little bit different. So let's say, let's say we can add by sectors. Which would be a little worse, but that's alright. So let's say... We have bytes read, we can, we can read into a buffer. Do I have like a sector buffer? I just have a null block. I can add a sector buffer. Uh, let's say sector buff of sector size. Don't like making all these global, but that's all right. So I'm gonna F read into that buffer. Sector size, or actually, I'll try to read one byte, fs up to sector size number of bytes from, not from the image pointer, from the file. We haven't opened the file, have we? No. <laughs> okay. So let's open the file. That would be temp name, because we need it to be absolutely qualified. We got that up here. We got stat for it. So qualified for my local file system so that this works. Read as binary. If it doesn't exist for some reason, I guess I can say it's bad. Yeah, and we'll return false. Okay, but assuming we did open it and we are good, for all the sectors that the file takes up. We'll try to do that. This won't be less than sector size. This will be sector size for the file, which would be probably file inode size and sectors. I suppose, or just less than the size itself, but we can probably do it like this. It could take up another sector than it actually is. It could take up a partial number of sectors, so this should be okay. So we want to read into sector buff one byte up to this many bytes for a sector from the file pointer. However many bytes were actually read, because we're reading one byte at a time, should be put into this variable, and it'll be in sector buffer. So then we can write from sector buffer one byte, however many bytes were read. Trying to think if there's a better way to do this loop now. I could do like a while loop on this while it's above zero, for example, but I guess we'll go with this. And we'll write this to the image pointer because we have just soaked, seeked, we already saw it <laughs> to the correct position from here. So we'll write the file at that position. But I need an ending condition. I guess the ending condition would be the size and sectors. Then we can pad out to the end of the, the, end of the bytes. I can have a total as well. Total bytes, we'll say written. And we'll plus equal that according to how many bytes were read, because that's how many bytes we wrote. Or I could probably get the output from fwrite as well, but that's okay. So assuming we wrote the full file there, just to keep things consistent, I'll f F right, assert, continue doing that. So this could be a partial block. 
after we read and write all these sectors for the file. That could not take up a full block. It might not be aligned on a block boundary, the total size of the file. So I want to then align it on a boundary and add to the total file blocks, I guess. Or do I not need to do that? No, we already found that out from the initial other, other function, right? Yeah, we're already adding the total number of blocks that we'll need, so I don't need to do that here. Okay. But I should pad out to the end, the end of the data block, and that would be the total bytes written. Do I have padding bytes? Probably. So I want to fwrite, not from the sector buff, but just probably the null block. One byte, uh, according to number of padding bytes. I don't. I do have this in this file. Okay, forgot. According to the current number of bytes we're at, which would be total bytes written, so we'll be doing modulo for for this as well. Yeah, this gets the number of bytes to the next boundary, so that's fine. And the boundary would be the block size and bytes. Write that many number of bytes to the image pointer. This is going to be a long, ugly sort of assert here. <laughs> but that's all right. And I want that to equal this sort of number of bytes to the image pointer. And that is the assert statement. Okay. It's a very ugly assert statement. That's all right. And then we'll assume that we wrote the file correctly. So we'll write the name of it. I'll have the size that was in in bytes and the size in blocks. Okay. That should be all right. We could also do, instead of bytes to blocks, would be probably the size in blocks, which would be here, the extent length in blocks, but that's fine. We'll just do the what I already had there from the, the stat struct. So that should write all the files within a directory. Assuming we haven't found a directory, we just found a file, we'll write those. I'll restore the position I was at, since we used fseek a few times to go to the inode and the data blocks. That fseek will take us, when we restore the position, will take us back to where we were in the data blocks for the directory that we're writing directory entries for these files into. <laughs> goes back after this position, so the position for the next directory entry for the next loop here, which should end right after that point. Okay. So assuming we wrote all the files correctly, which is a big assumption, we'll then close out the directory, and that will recurse. Yeah, that will recurse for directories. This needs to be... We need to give it the current and next inode. I guess the next inode, I gave it directory entry ID, and that equaled next inode ID plus plus. So I'll send that in there, next inode ID, and the parents would be whatever this directory is. So directory inode ID, when we're initially writing this directory, its ID will be the parent, for any directories directly under it, right? So if, if we have a nested directory directly under this one, I'm using direct too much as a root word here, <laughs> um, then this directory would be the parent of that. So that's what I want to add, as I forget where my place was right here. <laughs> that's what I want to add. So this will be the parent inode ID. This will be the current directory's ID for dot and dot dot. Well, this wouldn't be next then. It would be the current um, directories. Or am I overthinking this? <laughs> oh, the current the current inode ID, if it's a directory, would be for this directory. So it would be this one, actually. Or, well, this one. So it would be directory entry ID. That makes more sense. Okay. So if we, if we found a file and it is a directory, the ID for that directory entry would correspond to that directory. Otherwise, we're getting... I'm passing in the parent, which is this overall directory that we initially added the inode for that, its ID. That would be the parent for any directories that are directly under it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Still kind of confusing myself, but that's all right. So after we've written all the files in there, we do have the size of all of those directory entries for this directory itself. And I don't need to add that to file blocks. 
So we have the size of that, and I want to pad out to the end of the data block for this directory, which would be kind of like padding out for the file. Except I need the number of bytes written, which is going to be this directory size. That's the number of bytes that was written to the block size. And that'll be all right, a little bit better. We wrote this directory with this name according to this many bytes and bytes to blocks for that. Okay, hopefully that kind of works all right for writing directories and files from a host file system to the disk image. My only iffy sort of iffiness for this is going to be, where was it at? Here, like making sure this number is okay. I know I'm going to set it to 2 here, otherwise I'm going to increment. That is okay. But the initial value is going to be 1. This is going to be 1, current inode. The next one starts at 3. So actually that, that probably will be alright. So if this is going to be 1 for the root directory, if we go and find another directory, it's going to start at 3 and increment. That's going to be fine, actually, because that's going to start at 3. So it'll bypass 2 even though we can pass in one to begin with. Yeah, the bootloader would be two. Otherwise, any other file will initially start at three and then increment. So yeah, that actually, I think that'll be okay. Just had to reassure myself of that. I think we're seeking all right for the directory and the file. I'm assuming those are written. What else is needing to be done? I'm not sure of anything. As we'll have written all the data. And after it's all written, we're going to pad out the overall disk image. So, okay, we can see what I failed to make good for compiling first. We have type offset T. That's true. Too many arguments to get file info as well, because I didn't change it. That's true. This one here. Get file info. Oh, this isn't get file info here. This is whatever function this is. Write file data. Because I'm writing file data. Okay, expects unsigned int but has off t for offset 508 and 9. And I'm redefining some things. Which is just right here. So file stat. Okay, is it larger? I mean, I can do... What is what is the percent sign for that? Does it tell me? It's a long int. So LU. Okay, it says LU. Alright, that might be different on like Windows, though. I can do LU and just cast it to a 64, which isn't great, but that's probably okay. Hopefully that's alright. That might be different on Windows as well. Um, I'll just do this. That might not correspond to UN64, but I'll try to split the difference there. Redefinition of size at 523. Because I initially got it in this function up here, so I already know how big it is from there. So I don't have to do that again. That is... Um, that is entries times the size of an entry, which is what this is, so I don't have to do that. Cool. That saves me a little bit of work. Temp name is undeclared at 526, because I can't spell probably. Oh, temp name there. Oh, it would be the directory path. The path. The path that is passed in. Right, this is the directory we're writing. The name per file that I fully qualify will be added on to the end of that path right here, but for the directory itself, that's just going to be the, the directory path. Okay. So if we go through if we go through and find the stuff, let me put it out here so I can scroll. <laughs> so initially from my make file, I'm building these files and then I'm inserting them into this new sort of not virtual but host file system that I'm copying into the disk image. I am sort of discovering everything that's in that file tree that I'm going to copy over. Determining how many files there are within it and how large the total sum of those are in disk blocks. Which is where I get this, these values here. 
as well as the total size of the, disk, of the disk image I want to make. And then when I write those files, I'm just going through and doing a depth first search. So it kind of, it goes within the system, into system bin, and it writes the files, and then it goes back out and writes the bin folder, and then, you know, it goes from there. So that's why you see these are written the bytes and block values. It goes back up to the sysbin folder, writes that. Goes back up to here, writes that. Back up to here, writes that. So that, that looks okay. Now if the positions are correct on the disk image, this should work. But it probably won't. <laughs> as you can see. Uh, and that's also from the third stage not being corrected, so I forgot about that. But um, let me change one more thing. For the directory specifically, I know how many bytes there are, so I'm just going to put another number for however many directory entries. Just because I, I think that's useful. For me, I don't need to, but I think it's useful. And that would be the directory size divided by Hmm. Divided by the size of an entry, it should be directly divisible, since I'm only writing that many bytes at a time, so that'll be alright. That just helps me visually see if I have a directory, I have 12 entries, and I can verify I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's only 10 files. Oh, plus dot and dot dot would add two directories entries. Yeah, so that's true. That's true. So I can actually do this minus two and do plus two. It it it'll look kind of weird, but I'll say plus two there, and that will mean the dot and dot dot entries. But uh, anyway, that way it matches these because this these are ten files and then the two extra for the dot and dot dot entries. Okay, so that looks okay. I do have to change. Well, I say it looks okay. I don't know if this is done, so I won't remove this yet. But I do have to change the third stage.c because the kernel is no longer at just the root directory. We don't have it in there. We have it at the system bin kernel.bin path. As well as the fonts here is at this new path under system and bin. And hopefully those were the only changes I had to make sort of for that. We can see moment of truth. It does not work, of course. Why would it? <laughs> so I have something that's messed up somewhere. And... I expected that to happen, to be honest. Always expect that to happen. I think git file info is okay, though, so I'm not going to worry about that. I will worry about this write file data nonsense. Which I start out with the root inode IDs, that should be okay. First data block in the super block, that should be alright. Well, is that correct? Probably want the first free data block. That's the number. That's the first one, which is first inode block plus the number of inode blocks. Well, yeah, because I'm going to be writing the file data. So after the disk is made, this would be correct. And the first data block would be there. Yeah, so that's... That's right. This should be okay as well, hopefully. Well, this might not be right, actually. I need to determine where the end is first. So after I'm writing everything, it should be at the end, but... That may be a potential issue. So let's say I need to know where we're at. That might not be after where all the file data is, depending where things are written. So it should be, but maybe, maybe it's not. So to start out with, we'll fseek to the end. We'll have zero and seek end. And then we'll get wherever that position is and we'll pad out that absolute ending position to the total size. All right, I don't think that would have been the issue. But, yeah, because this is still that amount. But maybe it was. Maybe it was. Or at least part of the issue. Long unsigned int. Unsigned int. Oh, yeah, directory entries plus two. So I did the 
the wrong thing there. That may also be why it was bad. That's at 525. This is directory path. This is size. Oh, because it's divided by size of. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's not going to be super huge, I don't think. I'm just going to make it a UNT32. That's all right. <laughs> it's not great. And at least... Was that not going to get rid of my warning? Really? You still want it to be a long unsigned int? You're lame, dude. I have to do it there. Cast that value. And that doesn't have an issue after I called make right here. Okay. I don't think that was the issue either. Oh, it was the issue. <laughs> You have to seek to the end of the disk before you pad out the end of the disk. Well, who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? But hey, look at looky there. We have a new root directory after updating those hard-coded, admittedly, file paths in the third stage. I could full screen this, right? Can't I? Is it? It's probably Control Alt F. That's kind of big. Oh well. We have a <laughs> we have a new file path and stuff there. I don't have a toggleable date time like my UEFI stuff, right? Is it show date time? Is it just date time? Okay, I don't have it to be toggleable, but at least I know that that's my local time. And I should be able to go within system. We have bin and docs. I don't have anything with docs but tests, so I can try typing docs test and testing. That is the file that I wrote. That's good. I can try making, well, let's see if everything's under the bin directory first. And just in case, I'll print a memory map, but I'll go back and print that. All of those things look okay. Let's go into the user folder. I just have docs under here as well, which I have a second testing file. And we have testing user file. So I'm going to make a test directory in here. I'm going to go into there and I'm going to run the tests. Make sure that those pass. Those are good. We're still looking okay on memory. Hopefully we are. I'll try typing whatever the read test is because that's there. Now, before I found that if I wasn't setting the disk block correctly for these new files, the hello world and stuff would overwrite depending on the position. So this is also a test if the other things are overwritten or not, which is going to be under, I don't have tab completion, which would be nice. Um, I'm in test. So is that correct? Above, I have docs and test. Oh, yeah, because I just looked at the directory again. I wanted to go into look at docs. Oh, that's not good, is it? That shouldn't have overwritten the docs there. Because I ran the test in this directory. So, if I go above and I look in here, I shouldn't have ran it in that directory, I don't think. Is that bad? Or did I run it? I don't remember. I'll reboot, and then the, the text is going to be all wonky. So maybe I have some bugs here that I need to determine. So docs has stuff, and test has stuff. Did I not run it inside of only one of these? I don't remember. Let me, um... Let me get a clean slate. <laughs> I'm confusing myself right now, so let me get a clean slate. Maybe I won't go full screen either, because that probably is confusing me as well. So user, I don't have anything but docs. So docs, I have test too. I just want to make sure that stuff's okay. So inside of here, I'm going to make test. I'm going to go into test. Which all I have is here. So inside of this directory, I'm going to run tests. Which I have in this folder. I don't have it in this folder. I think I ran them like twice before for some reason. All right, so if I type in the test directory, the read test, for example, that's hello world. And I just want to make sure the other thing in the docs directory is okay. So it could not open that, which is not great. So I think I'm overriding a bad position there or something. Yeah, because then this stuff is overwritten. Yeah, so that is a bug. So I'm overriding some bad positions there. 
That's something I've ran into before. Possibly with seeking, this isn't correct. I know that's current directory position. That's where the next one is at. I might need to add that beforehand, before we write it. Which wouldn't make sense, actually. I should add it after we write it. Because it would overwrite the same position if I did it there. Okay, I may have to debug this for a bit and come back and take a break, probably. Because this will be a long video anyway, two and a half, three hours. So, so um, yes, uh, <laughs> it mostly works. I'm just, when I'm writing file data, I'm not going to the exact position that I should be, either for the inode or for the file data itself. But these should be all right. They're adding at the first block, which is going to be only incremented. That's okay. Maybe I'm not adding at the right ID. These are file inode IDs specifically. I'm f-seeking to the file inode first block, which is incremented after. And for each directory, that's also incremented. So that seems like it would be okay. Apparently it's not. Maybe this is wrong too, in some way. I don't know. I will debug this and see what I can find, and I'll be back when I find out. <laughs> so, thanks for bearing with me on these uh, ever-present technical issue journeys, but yeah, I'll, I'll see you in a sec. Alright, it wasn't actually that bad, because I had previous notes and repo commits to look at, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I just had some some issues with needing to reset how many files were being added for the initial inodes and the bitmap for those inodes and offsetting data bitmaps and stuff within the super block, mainly. As well as saving the position correctly when I'm writing the file data. So, let's look at these things. These seem to have fixed my issue. And I can remove the code, I'll probably do that off camera for catharsis reasons, but... Okay, so when I'm writing the super block, I do have the right number of files, except there's actually two extra, because I'm not including the root directory itself as a file, and I'm not including the inode 0 as a file, and... Technically, these are going to be used for inodes. The inode 0 itself, and the inode bitmaps, and the inode blocks, will be used for the invalid inode 0, so I do need to include that. And the root directory itself I wasn't really including before, and I need to, and I need to include that. But I don't need to subtract to, because I am now including the boot sector and the second stage within that system bin folder. So I don't need to subtract to anymore, which leaves just adding to. So that was, a, that was an obvious thing that I kind of missed. The other nicety, actually, the other benefit here of doing things this way is that I don't need to calculate a separate root directory blocks and add that anymore. That was kind of adding extra and maybe putting it in the wrong position. I only need to add an offset from the first data block according to however many blocks we're writing for the file system. So that's all I'm doing there, and that, that determines how many blocks are written by default. I could rename this to, like, written data blocks or something as a better name, but for example, and then the first free data bit corresponds to a zero bit available for the next file for the next file to be added later at runtime. So that that is the same value as the number of data blocks currently written at this point. And we just need to offset from the first data block the number of blocks that were written for all these directories and files that that we just went through. So what what that does is make sure that the data is correct and we're not overriding a previous end of file system uh, directory, which is what was happening. I was adding on incorrectly to the end of the last thing written on the disk. That's basically what was happening. So that, this kind of goes a good way forward in making sure we get the right position in the disk and the right bit in the bitmap to start writing to for additional things at runtime later. Okay, so when I'm writing the files in this write file data function, the current directory position, the position that I'm saving and restoring here, if it's all within this loop, that's not really great because I want to save the position for the directory, in which case we're writing it also outside of this loop. <laughs> this loop is for all the files within that directory, so the position and the file data for that directory, uh, I can start saving outside of the loop to be a little bit more correct, I think. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure this fixes a bug, but I think this fixes a bug or two. By saving it outside of the directory, I'm not getting a position 
that's in just local to this loop. So that may that may or may not be a bug. Actually, I just figure I should put it there because I had it before when I did this previously. Um, okay, and this line I don't need any more directory entries because we're getting that initially through this loop here. So I don't need to include it there. That'll be a wrong number. I don't want to do that. So that was here. Got rid of that. Uh, after I'm writing the file, I need to clean up the file. So that was just a thing. <laughs> I had closed directory for the directory down here. I didn't close the file, even though I just keep opening it. So I don't want, you know, e no int or anything to be happening later. Use up all the file descriptors for the process. So I need to be able to close them. And that is all I have in here. Hey, so that's actually not bad. And if we do that, if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. If I look in user, we have docs. If I look in user docs, we have this stuff. I just want to prove that no, that exists. I'm going to make a directory under user. Let's just call it test. And I'll go into that directory. There's nothing in there right now. But again, if I go up by one and look in docs, that's there. I can type that file just to ensure that it does print. And that is the text that's in there. And this Nothing was added to this directory currently. If I run the test, it will add the files created by those tests to this directory, but not above. And that file is still there. Just to make sure that we can print it out and it still exists, we didn't overwrite the position where that was or anything. It's here. And we can print the current files that are in this directory as well. And we're not using a bunch of memory and we don't have leaks, so that's good. So I think I'm good here. I can run the test in another folder just to ensure that they run repeatedly. A couple times or three, just to make sure we're not using more memory. And to make sure we're not writing or overwriting other stuff here. Of course, they're going to have the same content for these files, whether they're in that directory or this current one, because I'm writing the same file for the test. But anyway, that just proves that it's there. And we have system bin and that stuff's all good. So... Most of the stuff should work same as it did, same as it did before, including all the stuff that doesn't work, like the editor and, and changing a font and stuff. Because I need more fixes, because I wanted a file system that worked before I went and fixed those other things. But I have a more sort of flexible, dynamic file system we can create on boot. If you copy your own files or make your own folders and things within there, then it should copy that into the disk image, and you should be able to have it on first boot, which I think is pretty cool. It did take a long time for me to do this. Did you mean F close? No, I meant P close. No, I didn't. I meant I meant F close, actually, not just regular close. And that's why I scroll up, because otherwise I miss obvious things. And think I don't make mistakes, but I do. We need to close this file. F open. Needs an F close partner. And there we go. And it does boot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So what do I want to do from here? Um, off camera, I'm going to, you know, delete the commented out code and make disk. And I don't know what I want to do from here, to be honest. That's why I have to do's. I can move printing. I might make commands a little bit better. And I probably had other stuff in this file before, but when I did the revert commits, it removed them. But I might do other commands. I might make commands more like programs that are called at runtime and and change the arguments to pass them the argument vector instead of just one path or other argument. Make them a little more flexible like that. That way the shell can be a little bit better with the stuff that it calls and commands that it runs. I might make an ed or sed editor instead of the current character based editor. I might refactor the make file to make it a little bit better, add stuff to printf, uh, remove the size and sectors from the inodes and just add the parent inode in there, which may simplify other code. And I may also make dot and dot dot explicit and not separate entries. That might be in the future because I just got that working. <laughs> uh, change prompt would be a, a very simple command. Screen scroll back would be interesting. So page up and page down to scroll the screen, for example. That would, I think, be interesting. I'd have like a, I think a ring buffer of a certain number of lines. And we would just overwrite that and we'd print an offset within that, that overall array according to how big our screen is and how many lines fit on screen according to the size of our text, right? Something like that would be kind of interesting, I think. Um, I did just change all of this stuff. I'm just copying the 
the file and I will probably make other folders in here off off recording as well. I know for Git, for Git to submit and make folders in the repo, I have to include at least something inside of a folder. It doesn't save folders, it saves files in the path that they're in. So I have to make like placeholder files or something. I might do that and just add either the source that's in the source folder um, under like a source directory. I might add some documentation to the docs folder and stuff. We'll see. But I kind of did that, which is nice. Um, I may go with a help command, where I can add other directories here on boot for command help. And then help would just call, it'd be like the type command, it would just read whatever that file is and print it to screen, that would be pretty easy. And then to fill out the file system, I do need to add delete functions for files and directories and rename, or move or something. Move could probably take care of rename as well. But it would just, and rename would be move, but move to the same directory essentially essentially but delete is kind of doing what what we do to make a file or directory but in reverse <laughs> or wiping out what we did so it would be zeroing out the id and the name and stuff for the directory entry as well as zeroing zeroing out the data on disk and probably setting that bit to free in the bitmap for the inode or data bitmaps well inode and data bitmaps that's essentially what deleting a file and directory would do deleting the file data itself or deleting the directory entries for the file data for a directory. So that wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. Um, hex monitor, maybe. Other stuff, probably a PE file loader. Adding more flags to fix errors. Maybe doing F sanitize as well. Possibly writing an installer for a bootloader. Looking into scheduling and actual processes. Setting a better graphics mode at boot. Yeah, PE file loader would probably be good making the kernel L for PE instead of a flat binary, and other stuff from there. So I have stuff that I have to think about, and we'll see where I go from here. So thank you for watching. This was a long, boring video, and I'm getting to the tail end of, uh, uh, let's just say, a very busy time at the end of the year at my, my place of employment. So I've been tired and, and busy with that and not had enough energy and, and, and time and mindset to take care of this stuff as a, as a hobby, as it were, as a, an extra part-time job. So sorry about that. But thanks for watching, do appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next whatever I do for OS or otherwise. So, cheers! I'm gonna get more water, but if this had water, cheers. <laughs> it would. I would be drinking it. Yeah, I'll see you then.